practice for 10 years. It was back in the 70s when good forehand dentistry was just coming about. So it was an exciting time for dentistry, and it was a passion. But I played a little hard, too. Drove my cards a little too hard. Had to get cut out of a couple of them. Had to have a bilateral sort of confusion on my neck. Went from 6'4 down to 5'4 overnight. You don't think that part of the whole. But, but it, it did take me out of dentistry, unfortunately, at a very young age. You feel sorry for yourself. Everybody else feels sorry for you. And then all of a sudden, three months later, you realize you're the only one that has time to feel sorry for yourself. And you get on with life. And I was very fortunate to get involved back in the dental industry, kind of like Siberia, whether I liked it or not. It was what I knew, and that's what I loved. And I was very fortunate in that I sold the very first SARAC ever sold in the United States for Patterson Dental, because I managed their largest branch in downtown Chicago for years. So my dental background was very exciting for me. Can you all hear me, or do I need to use this microphone? Okay. Can you hear me okay? So I, I, was, I was very fortunate in that I had the largest branch, the most, the most advanced branch for selling equipment, and I sold the very first SARAC, for better or worse. Schwab, labs hated us, didn't they? Because they thought we were taking the lab business away from them. And the, the, what we produced with that was kind of like a BB in a box car. But it was still our digital world, wasn't it? But it was very exciting, and for 25 years, I've been given seminars that I say digital dentistry is just a click away. But yet, I wouldn't have bought an internal scanner for my own practice until three years ago. Because I have to be able to do a six unit bridge with it, too. I can't just do a single crown. And where the digital scanners are is still one of my main loves. And I still do whatever I can to make doctors explore the journey of digital dentistry. Now, Dr. Don did an incredible job of making me almost want to get involved with implants again. But as Kristen knows, an implant to me is a placeholder. It holds the place for the bone, doesn't it? Without me putting some beautiful graphical art product on top of that, all I have is an implant. That's where my world is, in the graphic arts, in the digital creation of creating that good custom abutment for you, creating the crown that's either screw retained or not screw retained creating a bar for you, creating a denture now, creating partials, doing guided surgery, creating the crown before you even start the implant. Digital dentistry in the last five years has come farther than it did in all those 25 years that I got to talk about a click away. It is very exciting. My journey, there's going to be some slides we're going to talk a little bit, but we're going to cruise through them pretty fast. My thing is that I create the digital connectivity. I teach swab and labs that that emergence profile, it's important that you talk to your lab about the emergence profile. It doesn't do Dr. Donna any good to put the implant in the perfect spot and you get an emergence profile that they didn't even worry about concavity compared to convexity. It doesn't do us any good to have all of this technology and still have our crown look like a golf ball on a tee. So my time is spent teaching labs how to use the software functionally to get you what you need. To teach labs how to get that intraoral scanner. We still have people thinking, well, there's only two intraoral scanners that can scan and send to a lab. Every intraoral scanner out there can scan whatever you want it to and send it to that lab. Why, do, why am I glad that Schwab's here? I like Schwab, okay? That's why I'm glad that he's here. But I've worked with Schwab for long enough now that I know he's very digitally astute. He really gets his stuff. He really loves it. And there isn't anything that he doesn't want to journey into when it comes to digital. He's one of only our 150 ENCODE empowered labs throughout the United States. So he can take ENCODE scans too. I am going to talk a little bit about the ENCODE tonight. I'm in love with it. Have any of you ever done an ENCODE before? Have any of you had a bad experience with it? Let's be honest. Have you had a bad experience with it? We're lucky. I don't have anybody raising their hand. Throughout the United States, there have been people with bad experience with ENCODE. If they did them eight, nine years ago, we were still just learning. We were the only ones that could do digital custom abutments back then. Everybody can do them now. But we had to learn. We stumbled a little bit. And they were god-awful expensive. As a general dentist, you couldn't have got me to pay the extra price for it. I don't care. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have. But if you look at it now and you look at the pricing, it's very competitive to other custom abutments and crowns. 
So I think we got some common sense to us. We got the price range where it needed to be. And we have 150 labs that are taking scans from all of your doctors, taking polyvinyl impressions on ENCODE, and we get beautiful results, thousands of them a month. So it is here. It's a very, it's a very successful process. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, you know, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about patient demands, restorative challenges, and how can technology help us meet these challenges, and how can the right lab partner facilitate this. So I already talked about Schwab, so we got that out of the way. Um, I'm going to kind of review everything here real quick. But Dr. Donna did a great job. I sent you, a, I think you all got to see a case that I sent around. That's a guy. That's a guy for a 3i case. Um, the things I look for, because I teach labs how to, do, how to use this. I'm sorry if I trip a little bit, but my spine isn't. Um, I, I can move real good. I just can't stand still. So, so I teach labs how to design these guides. And there's three or four different softwares that are great. You may have heard of Anatomage, Simplant. Um, I think you use co-diagnostics a lot, but the people that do them for you, it's the standard of the industry. Implant Studio is the one I teach. It's a three-shape product. It's the newest, the new kid on the block. But the things I look for, can I get a good cone beam scan? You know, I have to inspect that. If that's no good, I mean, like this one, if I had a little bit bigger picture there, how could I do a guide on the, on the max level with all that scan? It would be impossible. But in this case, they were doing the mandibular, and so this one worked just fine. The, the other thing is we, we, get, we get the internal scan and we get the cone beam. It's critical that I can match those two up, that I get the two married together correctly. If that's off a tiny bit, the case is of no value. So these softwares now, and we used to, I, I know implantologists six, seven years ago called these things tissue punches. But they don't anymore. There's nothing that has grown faster in our industry over the last three years than guides being used in implantology. So these are, these are important things. Mapping the nerve. You're not gonna do this on, on one of my friend's 16-year-old daughter, well, I hope she doesn't need an implant, but nobody's gonna do this on one of my friends if they don't feel confident about mapping that angular artery. And these softwares do a beautiful job of mapping. And of course, we have to be able to get the implant place. We have to know that the, uh, the, the little <coughs> line around that, the little smooth line, that's the safety zone. You know, I have to know my 1.5 millimeter safety zone when I'm placing these things. It's critical. So then when I get my guide, the guides, you notice that little notch there? That notch times it. So if when I place my guide and I drop it down and I use the guide kit and that last one drops down into the notch the way it's supposed to, that means that it is timed to an XYZ axis which is a very, very powerful thing because if you want, and this is what the, the, uh, the, the uh, guide protocol looks like, so there's the surgical report is, is over there, and that's, that's very, very important that we have a good surgical report. But we also need a good drill protocol report. If we don't have that, it becomes very difficult to smoothly go through the different instrumentation. And so with the, with the navigator, with our 3i, and with our Zimmer, both of those, we have great protocols and great uh, reports that come out for this. But when I have it completely timed like I just showed you, if you want, because when I bring it into three shape to design, I don't need a scan body. That timing created the scan body for me. My, my implant, my virtual implant is placed perfectly in there with me knowing exactly where the XYZ axis is. So I know where the facial is, I know where the, the mesial and distal are. So I can get results out where I can create uh, a temporary uh, immediate provisionalization with a guide tube in it. I can do it a, a variety of different ways. I could create a custom abutment ahead of time if you wanted with a, with a, uh, a, a, a screw tape crown. So having that time, I'm not saying that I would want to do this in every one of my cases. I'm saying that this is where the growth has come. We have this capability. So we can, a single one, we have cases all the time now that they're doing immediate provisionalizations for the whole, um, for the whole, um, all on fours. I'm sorry, that's a word for me to use, isn't it? <laughs> the immediate dentures, immediate professionalization dentures, okay? So, so we, we can do all these partials. I mean, these have been done for some time now. I doubt that you even know it, but all your partials are digitally designed. They can take this and, and they, can, they can cast this on wax. They can now center this in metal so it goes straight from the three shape software 
straight over to bagel, and they, they, they will center this in milk. There's no casting, there's no worry about investment mistakes or anything. Dentures. You, you know, all of us know the way they have a dent. There's three shape and design dentures. There's several denture software programs now. But think about this. Why would I be interested in this as an implant company? Because I don't know that I want them to reduce that much bone to get a bar and everything in there. So this, if I wanted to do an overdenture with locators, with four locators, where I can, re where I can reduce my reduction, now with three shape being able to design the dentures, where I can do a quick temporary denture, I can print that. I can do milled dentures, that the milling materials are better than the loose tone materials we have, and we can get products like this out of it, all digitally created. I'm not saying we're there, but I'm not saying it's for every office. I'm showing you that, this, that the graphic arts softwares now are capable of doing all of this stuff. And okay, goals for digital dentistry, aesthetic, and, and uh, anatomical solutions. Reduction of cost, efficiency of process, speed results, precision measurement, <coughs> increased productivity, of outcome, predictability of outcomes, improved clinical results, simplified treatment planning, improved patient experience, unique and, and uh, proprietary digital solutions. <coughs> Question. Yes. Um, for an immediate venture, where you have five, six, seven feet, Yes. Can you apply that? Yes. These softwares now, you can give me anything you want. I can, I can take your immediate, whatever you send me in an internal scan, I can take and extract those teeth within seconds and put in a complete arch of, of digital teeth that all match up and send you back a printed model with all those teeth in it the next day. So I can create immediate digital diagnostics. I have some videos of stuff like this that any of the, you that want to give me your emails, I have what I call tidbits. And one of those that I have on there is how to do immediate diagnostics. And so there's, there's, and then I can carry all of that into the denture process. I can get rights. The, um, some of the new software now is getting very close to where the articulators they have on them are gonna accept gothic arch tracing and face ball transfers. So I can theoretically take that first, that first set of uh, measurements that you give me and give you an immediate try-in with eliminating a lot of your steps but a lot of the lab steps too. So yes, we can deal with all of that. Did I answer your question or did I skate around it? Well, sort of. Um, but a lot of things that, at least in my experience, vertical dimension, you know, size of lead's placement for speech, sort of have to do those in the mouth. And, and I don't disagree. And I've done Abidant, and um, you know, with the little strip that came in. I'm, I'm not a fan of Abidant, but we it's can talk about that scary. off record. But, but I do think that Abidant started a process that we realized that there are digital information, or there are, there are oral information that we need to accumulate that can't be done without a good baseball and a good um, ca capturing this model line isn't as easy as people think it is. And so to capture all that stuff often takes a product in the mouth. But with what we're doing here now, sometimes that where you have the, the, um, the base plate and you do all of your measurements on that, sometimes it's coming back as the actual, the wax try-in has the teeth in it. So it becomes easier for you to do your, your your measurements with that person to get that, to make sure that they're hitting the, what's that called, the... Uh, well, I've, I've done that to have them make the base plate and then set the teeth on the base plate. Yes. Because that way the thing stays put. Yes. But now they're taking that base plate and, and actually have the teeth right in it. And, and, um, but what you're saying is there are several different softwares out there that are working towards getting the stuff that you want digitally also. I don't think they're there yet but they're getting real close. I mean, all the articulators now have condyle settings in them for each different articulator where I can set the condyle settings the way you want those set. So as we advance with each of those steps, we're getting closer to what you want. Fair enough? By the time I'm 80. 
<laughs> hey, I turned 70 this year. I, I, I'm just going to keep going until they don't want me to go anymore. <laughs> so, um, you know, Zimmer Biomet, you may all know there was a Zimmer and there was a Biomet. And they all had different names like Calcitech and, and 3i and stuff like that. Both of those companies are well-respected companies. The merger of those two companies has made a very large company that I think is still very well-respected. Um, I don't want to get into a lot of beating the chest, but I do want to talk about this here, our, our institutes. One of the reasons I'm here, one of the reasons we do this is that we do believe that education-based companies are very, very important. And I don't think there's a more education-based company than Zimmer Biomed is. And the Zimmer Biomed institutions, the one, one of these is in Carlsbad, <coughs> California, and one of them is in Persephone. We have another one in Sweden and some place. There's like five or six of them. The only two I give a squad about, unless you want to go to Sweden, we can do that too. But, but I talk at these two, and they are unbelievable institutes. These mannequins, you know, they, their eyes light up and stuff when you hit the nerve and, and all of that. But to, to really tell you how powerful these institutes are, we have 65 dental universities that contracts time in these facilities to do their, their grad, their, a lot of their continuing ed programs. So it's been very well respected by the clinicians, by the labs, but also by the universities. And we, we love putting on presentations here. Kristen can talk to you about, we have programs where, I don't know that we send you there for free, but we've got some pretty wow. cool programs that we put together where we try to get groups of, of clinicians and the specialists to come out as a group uh, to, to one of these events. And we just, we get nothing but compliments on them. So I did want to bring up our, our institutes real quick. Um, I don't know where, I'm, I, I've got slides that slip by here, but you already talked about, about our implants. They're great. You know, the one thing, our connection, we got that little snappy thing, which everybody loves. But our implants, they, they've stood the test of time. Everybody loves them. Um, but I do want to talk about custom abutments to stock abutments, because there's still a lot of people that use stock abutments. And I think three years ago there may have been some value because there was a cost differential. But the reality is, when I'm working with a custom abutment compared to a stock abutment, the reason I show this picture is because there is not a crown prep that I do that is an oval racetrack. They're all motocross racetracks. They all have a lot of irregularity to them. When I start with a stock abutment like this and I have to start grinding it down to grind my, my, my margin line in, this, this taper goes away real fast. So it becomes difficult and time consuming to grind a stock abutment into a good custom abutment. And anymore, if you're, if you're grinding your own in, I may not have an argument, but if you're having a lab do it, two years ago, it flipped. They will charge you more to do a stock abutment now than they will a custom abutment. When I can design this in three shape in less than five minutes and get your emergence profile with concavity or convexity the same the exact way you want it, I just don't see a value to custom abutments. Again, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you said it back. Well, I've gone Nobel now. I'm done selling everything I'm not supposed to, aren't I? I don't see a lot of value with it. And, and we sell, uh, you know, the, 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 cut, the stock abutments were our, were our bread and butter. Because uh, we just have a whole bunch of them on the shelf and sell them for almost as much as we do a custom abutment. But a custom abutment's where it needs to be. And so I spend my time on, on teaching this part. Question about that. Custom abutments that are made by 3i, or by, right? Because I was working with a lab a few years ago, and they started providing custom abutments that weren't the, they weren't, com they fit pretty much with the 3i implants that I was using. Okay. But they weren't authorized by 3i. Well, and, and this this is a this is a fight that's hard for me to win. But it's a fight that I have to continue to convince you of our value. Is that the 510k thing? Well, we're talking two different things here, but the same thing at the same time. In the the for for you to get a custom abutment from us, an OEM that we mail at our facility. It has to be with our scan bodies. But everybody has created aftermarket products. So you can go to Implant Studio and or Implant Direct. You can go to uh, uh, True Abutments. You can go to uh, Atlantis. 
and they all have a scan body that they will say, we can make you a 3i or a Zimmer custom abutment. And they can, but it is reverse engineered. And a good example is ours has a four millimeter neck on it. The, the, the um, and, uh, Atlantis has a two millimeter. Some of them are a little bit rounded. They're not, um, they're not, they're not, some of them are very nice. But none of them, as far as we're concerned, are going to be the three I. Nobody is going to warranty it the way we do. They all have warranties, but nobody's going to warranty it the way we do. So I do think that there is value. We have the best machinists in the world. Every one of our mills that are milled are half million dollar or more Haas mills. They are true commercial mills that are oil, water, immersion. The 510K came up, but I don't know that anybody's paying attention to it. So a lot of these other companies that have mills did not have the 510K. If we took a mill from our facility that I just showed you that big facility, and we moved it across the street to a new address, we would have to go through another whole 510K, even though it's the same mill that we moved across the street. That's how strict the 510K rulings are on these things. And it should be, because our company talked about selling blanks to people like Schwab to do it. And I said, look at Number one, I don't want to be a commodity person. I lived downtown Chicago for 23 years. If I want to sell commodities, I'll sell down on the commodity exchange downtown Chicago where I sell $50 million worth of commodities in a trade instead of $50 worth of blanks. But, but the, the problem that I had wasn't the 510K clearance. It was how do I control somebody that's got a, the, the, a good commercial lab may have a Haas mill. But they may also have a $25,000 mill that claims it will mill titanium. And after they've had it for a year and that spindle, because it's so small, starts bending the blanks. You're going to think it was us that screwed it up because it was our blank. So I really argue with our company, if they're going to go to labs and let them mill titanium, inspect the mill that they're using, make sure it's a quality mill. And that's where I do value the 510K thing. But there's still a lot of people out there, and I don't know that anybody's inspecting to whether they have the 510K. And I'm not saying that there isn't an aftermarket that we should be worried about. But the reality is you should know whether it's aftermarket or whether it's us that's doing it for you. And you have that right to know it. And if you're confused about it, trust me, talk to Chris and she'll find out if it was the, the, the legitimate or an aftermarket. In addition to the warranty part, particularly the implants that Dr. Donald uses from us, the T3 implant includes, uh, so it's a lifetime warranty but it extends into your restorative lab bill, okay? So there's certain components of your lab bill that will actually get reimbursed if something happens 15, 20 years down the road. Um, and there's no other company that's doing this restorative reimbursement, so it, it's, but the second, because we have to provide an itemized lab bill, right? The second we see it's a non-authentic part, I, I can't help you, unfortunately. So it, it is a, it's an additional service that, you know, part of insurance, basically, to help you down the road if anything ever came up. Well, Sean said earlier that uh, if we send a case, he designs the abutment, but then he'll send it to the company to do the milling. So in my case, Stroman or 3i. Yes. Um, Schwab designs it, and if he's use, if you use our scan body, he uses our scan body, that it, scan body is creates what's called an encryption process. So it can't be sent over to, to, to Atlantis or to Atlanta. He would have had to use one of their scan bodies. And if we find out that you really wanted it to come to us, and Schwab, we found out that he was using somebody else's scan body, we would be very offended and we would make sure everybody knew that, there, that we weren't following your requests. And that's very important that we do. That's important to us that we do. Thank and that's why I work closely with people like Schwab, because I know he wouldn't do that to me. Or to you. In my case, you know, we do not use any aftermarket parts. We, you know, even though it's our design, we only go to the company that, that has the implant. So when it comes back to you, it's original part, considered 100% original part. Well, I, I don't know about 3i, but Strawman, I know, sends little stickers for the chart. Yes. And little things demanding, you know. And even after that, we send out the stickers, the certificates with every single case that where this case was produced. So in 3i's case, it's a, you know, yeah. a card that shows you where it was milled, when it was milled, what number two it was. So you have the certification that you can put in your patient's record and it will 
you know, and if you honor the warranty, if there's a lifetime warranty, then it's a lifetime warranty. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no. These are, I mean, these are things that are what I like to talk about because I want to promote as much business for us as we can. But, but in my direction, I'm I'm doing functionality here. But anytime you have questions like that, I love chit chatting about it, especially when I have Kristen here to answer those types of questions for me. Um, Schwab's going to get into this, but again, this is where this is where my time is spent, creating that good customer love, teaching that lab that they have. You know what, if this is off a millimeter to one side, and I just give you what was the healing cap on there, the end code, because you don't want to do any blanching, but it doesn't turn it into the perfect crown prep, did I do you a service? You know, I at least should say, hey, here's the ideal crown prep thing. Because what is a custom abutment? To me, there's, it's, there's nothing complicated about it. It should be a perfect crown prep thing, shouldn't it? That's all a custom abutment is. If I create a perfect crown prep for you, it should look like a mold. It should look like a bike custom. It should look like I had my 557. Oh, wait a minute. Do any of you know what a 557 is? Who knows what a 557 is? Okay. Okay. So it was the, I mean, that was the only tool we used in the 70s was a 557. Okay. So, again, where's my world? My love is, is right here. When that scanner could scan a six unit bridge for me. And I can get a beautiful case, screw retain, facial cutback. I, I, I know you all love I know you all love zirconia. If I were still in practice, I'm sorry, all of mine would be facial cutback, so I have the beautiful porcelain on the front of it and going up over that incisal edge. So when my friends go out to the party and the and the blue lights at the uh, underground club in Chicago, it, I want it to look as natural as possible. So I still like I still like porcelain here. Zirconia has come a long way. It's probably farther along than I want to admit. But I still like teaching facial cutbacks, so I teach these kind of stuff. Um, okay, here's the end code. And it's important for any of you that have never used an end code. An end code is a scan bot. That's all it is. But the big difference is if this is a healing if this is a healing cap, when it comes time to scan it or take a polyvinyl, I have to take that out. If it's a regular hitting cap, put a scan body in, or have to put it in, in what do they call it, impression copings? An impression coping in for an open tray. I don't talk about closed tray because I'm not a big believer in closed tray. I like open tray. But this this has the markings on it. These markings tell Swab how to line up the library when he puts it in. And like I say, we do thousands of cases a month with 150 different labs, and they line up beautiful. We're getting beautiful lines. So whether you're doing a polyvinyl or whether you're using a trio, so the trios does have to be my favorite scanner, but they will all scan the end code. If I can yes. comment, when you sell these things to surgeons, they should use a tall enough one so the gingiva doesn't encroach over the edge. It, it, if there's any fight for me, it's that there's a sub, and, and I'm a master at aligning these things, so labs call me from all over the country, but my, I gotta see some wall. I can't just see these markings. Ideally, I need to see a millimeter of wall all the way around, ideally two millimeters. If I see two of the four walls and I see this line up, sometimes I'll gamble, sometimes I'll take the, 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 the lab to gamble because if I don't, I have to call you up and say, listen, you have to get the patient back from 50 miles away and then you're gonna have to put a different scan body in there and you have to rescan it. So sometimes we gamble where we shouldn't but pressure hits us in all directions. But there's no doubt, one of the biggest offenses to these, because they are so nice, they're in there for four months, that tissue is gonna creep up a little bit on. So what started off looking good, ends up with the, with the tissue. But again, it's not the end of the world to take that one off, put a little taller one, and scan it. And so, by all means, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, because that's a, um, so I'm not gonna tell you what all these markings mean, but they have a specificity to them. The biggest thing is that 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 end code does not have to come off. When Dr. Donald puts it in, four months later, it comes back to her and she scans it for you, or it comes back to you and you do a polyvinyl or scan it. It's in place, I don't have to disrupt the tissue. So let's take a look at the, the typical healing abutment and the impression coping for an open tray compared to an end code. Now, this is kind of boring, but I want you to think of it not only is just one 
implant that we're doing, what if you had two or three or four or five or six or seven? Okay, so we start the day off where we have to, um, we, we have to take off the healing caps on the left. Okay, on the right, the end goes there, it just stays there, so we don't do anything. Next, we have to attach the, uh, the, uh, tra the impression copings. Next, we do have to do this for both of them. We need to verify the seating. This probably should have been before the other slide, but it's here. So either way, I should take an x-ray and verify that it's seated. Next, I have to pick my tray. I have to block out the, the, uh, the um, copings. Now here I have to take an impression for either one, whether I'm doing the end coat or whether I'm doing the open tray, I have to take an impression. But I will tell you, taking this impression compared to taking this impression intraoral or with a polyvinyl, there's a big difference, especially when you get to three, four, or five and you have to get them through that tray and they're up taller like that, this becomes much, much more comfortable. But I still have to take an impression either way. Now I have to go ahead and um, unscrew those. I have to put the, coping, the uh, analogs on it. I have to screw the analogs on. Where's my hand? Oh, I have to replace my healing cap. Nothing on the right. I have to mail it off to Schwab. He has to disinfect it. Now, as I'm showing each of these to you, remember each of these has its risk of inconsistency, doesn't it? Every one of these steps. I have to pour it up. I have to trim it. Now I have to scan it. I have to put a scan body on to do that. And then I have to scan on three shape scanner. So I had to take an impression and I had to scan. I already scanned this one before. So at the end, after I scan that, I end up at this exact same spot in three steps with the encode compared to 18 steps with our traditional method of doing it. 18 steps further where each of those steps has a risk of, of um, inconsistency. So from that standpoint alone, I see great value to the end code. I see great value to other people's scan bodies, but theirs you have to take in and out, ours you don't. And again, where I get into it is not only teaching that stuff, but working with you, working with Dr. Ghana, as she knows on a couple cases we've already done, and working with Shah Swahab to make sure we have the digital connectivity make sure if you're using a scanner and it's not getting over to Schwab, I quick step in there because there is a comfortable marriage between the two. It's just sometimes we both haven't been taught what needs to be done. And that's where my responsibility comes in for that. Um, some, of the, some of the big advantages we get out of digital is that we now can very conveniently design your abutment and your crown at the same time. This increases speed, it increases accuracy, especially for the screw hole. And then we can make models of any type for it. So the fact that we now have printers and we have models, it's unbelievable what we can do for you from that end of it too. From the diagnostics we talked about to whether you want to see your, your abutment come back to you with a model with an analog in it, some of you like that, some of you want it to be a model with a die in it. He has the flexibility to do it either way. And these are some of the models that we're getting out of this. And just a couple reminders there. And I'm done. And now we're going to have Schwab talk a little bit about the actual design process. Thank you very much.